Well, hi again, everybody, and as always, welcome to high school basketball here on WSN. As tonight, we're in the Western Buckeye League as the Ottawa Glendorf Titans are here in Wapakoneta to take on the Redskins. My name is John Zerby, everybody. Tonight, beside me, Coach Scott Mag here to analyze this matchup. And Scott, looking at these two teams, WB opener, what are some early thoughts about this game? Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very physical battle. Uh, both teams kind of know each other pretty well. Uh, both teams want to start up the league one and you know one and zero, get a good start. Uh, it's going to be a, a battle. I just I just expect a war tonight. It, it was two years ago. It was a war last year. I, I can't expect anything different. So we look at these two matchups. Let's first start with Ottawa Glandorf out to a three and zero start. What are going to be some keys for uh, the OG Titans to get out of here with a win tonight? Well, I I think one of the keys is they got to find somebody to go along with. Batman and Robin, so to speak. You got you got uh, White averaging 25, and you got Erford averaging 19, and then the next guy is like six and four and three, and uh, they got away. They played Bluffton last Friday, had 45 points, and Batman and Robin had 40. Yeah. So I mean, they got they got to get somebody to come along. They got guys that can do it. They just got to have some confidence. You know, the, the season is a long, it's a grind. They got to find somebody that's going to shoot the ball with confidence. Bluffton game, a lot of guys turned down some shots because they missed it. You know, that's, a, that's a growing experience, not with not much varsity experience. It's a good win for the Titans, but those guys got to come along for the ride because, you know, it's a long year, so it's a grind. White and and, and Erford may get in foul trouble sometimes. Somebody's got to step it up. Why not start early because you never know when you're going to need them. Second thing, I think the Titans have to handle physicality that the Redskins are going to do. They're going to set, they're going to play man to man. They're going to they're gonna play very, very, very physical. Uh, they're going to run motion offense. They're going to screen you. They're going to box out. And they are going to be physical, and they want to get the ball inside. It's kind of like, you know, when you're playing one-on-one -on -one with your little brother in the backyard, and you kind of back him down. That's kind of <laughs> what they're going to want to do. They want to back you down, and they just want to oppose their will on you offensively and defensively. So the Titans got to be able to handle that physicality. And last but not least, the Titans got to be able to make shots, and I think that's what hurt them a couple uh, against Bluffton a little bit. They were unable to make shots, string together some made baskets to get into their press. Once they got into their press and started making some baskets, they kind of swayed to the Titans' side, and, and that's kind of what they've been living on for the last five, six, seven years. They scored in bunches, and the reason for that is they put the ball in the basket, they get in their press, they get a steal, and somebody named Colin White comes flying down the lane, dunks it, <laughs> and gets the crowd going crazy. Especially at the, it, you know, when it's that OG, those crazies that stand over there in the side, they go nuts, and it's like piranhas lurking in the water. When they see one guy get a steal, everybody wants to get one, and it just, it just escalates from there. So the Titans got to be able to get made baskets so they can get into their pressure and do what they want to do. I'm very well said, and we look at Walpaw coming into this game two and one, but consider the underdog taking on. Uh, perennial league champion Ottawa Glandorf. What's it going to take for Wapak to compete in this game tonight? Well, I, I, I think you kind of touched on it. You know, they got to be able to impose their physicalness onto the Titans. Uh, they, I don't think they can be finesse. I don't, you know, they're going to have to make some shots. Uh, they're going to have to be able to be strong defensively against White and Erford. They're going to have to make somebody other than Batman and Robin beat them. And they're going to have to be able to handle the pressure. You know, the Titans are going to make shots, right? They're going to, it might not be many, but they're going to make some. And when they do make it, they can't have any live ball turnovers. When they throw the ball away and you get out in the wing and you get Colin White or somebody else dunking the ball, it, it, it just, they feed on that. And then that pressure gets a little bit more intense each time down. But if they can handle the press, don't throw any live ball turnovers. Now, I, you know, no one's perfect, right? You, you've coached long enough as well as I have. You're okay with turnovers as right. long as you don't throw it to somebody and they, they throw one pass ahead and get a layup, right? Yep. So live ball turnovers they can't afford, and I think they just got to be super, super physical, which kind of is in their DNA. So I think they got to impose their will and not turn the ball live ball turnovers. Uh, excellently said, Scott. It's going to be the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Walpock Redskins here in just a few moments. You're going to be watching WBL High School Basketball right here on WOSN.
Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School as tonight the Ottawa Glendore Titans taking on the Wapakoneta Redskins in this Western Buckeye League opener. I want to thank Dale's Concrete for being our quarter sponsor tonight. You can call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Let's start with the starting lineups tonight. First for Ottawa Glendorf, number one, Grant Schrader. Number four, Grady Tumasis. Number 12, Ross Mag. Number 22, you know this name, Colin White. Number 24, Caden Erford. The Titans are coached by Tyson McLaughlin. Coach Scott Mag, just going back and looking at this starting lineup, you kind of broke it down within the keys, but some really uh, key players in Colin White and Caden Erford, but looking for some more production for some of those guys that are uh, not only coming off the bench, but those with the rest of the starting lineup. Yeah, the, 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 number, the number two scorer is number one, Alex Wagner, averaging seven points a game, so he's not even starting. So that tells you White's like 23, 25, Erford's 19, and then Wagner's seven. The rest are under three. So uh, some of these guys have got get some good shots and just have to fall. Falling, like I said, we talked about in the pregame. This season's a grind. You just got to find somebody. You know, you got to see it go through the net. That's, That's all right. you need sometimes. For Wapak, you have number one, Caden Page. Number three, Zach Niekamp. Five, Nate Metzger. Eleven, Logan Healy. And number 20, Cash Shadle. Wapak comes in this game two and one. Coached by Trey Elkert. They got a big task ahead of them tonight. Yeah, they do. Uh, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of small too. So they'll be pesky, believe me. And uh, they'll run their motion and their sets. And uh, they'll make the Titans guard them. So Shadle and White will get the jump ball, and that'll be retained by the Titans. Grady Tumasis will bring the ball up the floor. He's going to look here to Ross Mag, and we're going to have our first triple try by White, and he drains it. That is a frost roofing three-point attempt. Yeah, that was uh, just what the doctor ordered. Make a make that first shot, and I'll get in there's a little bit of half court, and there's the turnover, live ball turnover, which we're at then to get it back. Good hustle. So Erfer gets the turnover, then turns the ball over to Caden Page, and now Wapak's going to try to settle things with the 3-0 to zero score on the structure scoreboard. Ottawa Glandorf on top of Wapak Canetta. Uh, and, and they're not going to be in a hurry to shoot. They're going to want to get the game in their pace, make sure they take a good shot. They're going to go back door, and I'm going to set a bunch of screens, make the Titans work on defense. Nate Metzger drives the baseline. He kicks it out to Page. Page looking inside. Now it looks like it's Zach Neekam going to reset things. Drives, takes a shot in the lane. Misses, nice rebound by Colin White. White gets it quickly up to Grady Tomasis. Tomasis almost makes a turnover. Nice save there by Erford. But they're going to get it to White. He drains it in the lane. That now pushes the Titan lead on the structure scoreboard to 5-0. to zero. Yeah, he's done that a lot. He just gets in that lane and just elevates and jumps over people and scores. That's his bread and butter. I think that's his best shot that he has. Well, it's tough to stop. You could see the elevation in the yeah. lane, and there was really no contest at all. Not many high school kids in this area, let alone in this state, can elevate and stop on a dime with that young man. And that's the reason why he's going to Ohio State. That's right. So Walpock looking here, being patient on offense. I like the patience. Logan Healy with the ball. Lots of passes here looking at Caden Page. Page is going to set things up. OG being patient on defense as well. This is kind of how they're built. They run, they run this. They, they don't take many bad shots. Notice a couple guys got in the lane, but they jump stop and turn it back out because they're not going to force anything normally. They're going to break you down and then try to Get you on a backdoor cut just like that. Nate Metzger makes a great pass to Zach Niekamp, but Zach Niekamp met Colin White in the lane there. Yeah, and then he blocked it off his uh, leg. So still 5-0 on the structure scoreboard tonight. OG on top of Walpakana. OG on offense now. Colin White looking inside, gets it to Tomasis. He puts it up, misses. The good rebound by Caden Page. Yeah, I think. I think Grady just thought he had a little runner kind of floater in there. Just a little long. It's knee camp with the basketball, looking for the backdoor cuts, Wapak being patient. And you know, one thing about, you know, having long sets on offense is that it keeps OG from having the ball offensively. Yep. I mean, it, 
could be said it's the best defense, but I'm, I'm impressed with Walpock's patience here yeah. with a nice play by Caden Page. And that's what you get. You get long to sleep because you come off those down screens, and everybody's like, okay, I'm tired of getting drilled on a down screen, so you kind of cheat it, you jump it, and then they go back door, and then they get easy going just like that. It's kind of how that offense is built. You get they down screen and they pound you. You're like, okay, I'm not going to get hit again. I want to jump this. And then you go back door as White misses first time. But a great rebound there yeah. by Ross Bag, a putback. As you'll see on this Union Bank instant replay, a nice put back there, and Ross Mag will get an opportunity to go to our Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Ross does such a good job. You know, he does all the dirty work, doesn't really get, you know, the name in the paper, but he's the one that guards the team's best player. He's the guy that goes and cleans up the boards, and, he, you know, he, the Redskins better make sure they find him because he's coming to get an offensive <laughs> rebound. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Mag misses the opportunity there, and a nice rebound by Ryan Sadler coming off the bench for the Redskins. So the Redskins will set things up here. A little bit of a press from OG, and the Redskins will commit that turnover. Yeah. Trying to throw it over top, and when you got a 6'5 athletic guy, you got to throw it a little bit higher to get over him. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, one out of bounds. For take, a Redskins fan. take a look at three of our officials tonight. We have Randy Prince here leading this crew, Tate Mayberry and Nick Swink, three good officials doing a great job tonight. White is going to kick it over to Erford. Erford takes the shot, misses, and the rebound comes down to Nate Metzger. Metzger's going to push it, but he is swarmed. He's looking over to the corner. He's going to get it to Shadel. Shadel shoots and misses, and a nice rebound by Grant Schrader. Good hustle with Sadler down there, kind of fighting for that ball, and it goes off of Grant Schrader's leg out of bounds for the Redskins. So it's the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 7, Walpock Redskins 2 on the structure scoreboard. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Nate Metzger going to drive the lane. He's going to kick it out. And Ryan Sadler's going to hold on to it. Now he's going to get it over to Zach Niekamp. Back to Metzger. Metzger drives the lane, takes it up and in. No call. And a yeah. nice play by that Metzger. Yeah, I, I, you know, that, good job by the officials and no call. If, if anything, it might have been a block because I think he got there just a little bit late. But good job by the fish to let him play on. It's going to be a lot more physical than just that <laughs> little touch. Like right there. <laughs> nice dribble in the lane there. Good rebound by Holden Aldridge. And he puts it back in. Holden Aldridge coming in, contributing for the Titans. Yeah. Good job by him, just kind of hanging out at the rim and going to get himself an offensive rebound. So 9-4 on the structure scoreboard. OG on top of Walpock. We see Zach Niekamp with the basketball. Turn, spins, going to take it up in the lane, but they're going to get him here. looks like on the floor Ooh. we're going to get a foul on Ottawa Glandorf. I think they got a foul on uh, Grant Schrader. Kind of a little push there. I think when he's on, he kind of arm barred it down there, looked like, from here. And I, you know, in high school basketball, it's, you know, it, it can go game to game depending on officials. But I, I always like watching, letting teams play. I mean, not out of control, but especially, like you said, in these physical games, it's really fun to see kids get after it and, and, and watching the officials let them play. Yeah, and, and I think they did let him, they were kind of bumping a little bit, but I think Grant extended his arm and then he made, that was like an obvious, he has to call that when you extend the arm, otherwise that leads to a lot more other things. Very good. Cash Shadel, Shadel gets the ball over to Sadler. Sadler has it back in the corner after pushing it to Caleb Adams. And now Walpock just looking, being patient, trying to find an open look. We have Nate Metzger here to making the turnover. Now the yeah. Titans are in control. It's a good move by Metzger. He did everything but finish. It's a good job. White drives the lane Can't and it's pretty. That, Ooh, that is pretty. There's not many young men in high school that can stop that. He stops so close, elevates, and just by the time he gets to the top of his jump, the ball is gone and you're still standing on the floor watching him. That is very difficult to do, but he yes. makes it look super easy. Sure does. <laughs> Ottawa Glendorf going to commit that foul. Looks like they're going to get Caden Erford for this foul here. That's going to be his first, the team's first. We have some substitutions here as well. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. Connor Kitchen gets in for the first time, number five. And Grady Tomas is back in for the Titans. Well, and Ottawa Glendor has been known to have a deep bench, and Coach Tyson McLaughlin has 
I mean, it's just the thing. You know, you're going to play a lot of different guys and never literally lose a beat as he brings new guys in off the bench. Yeah, and I think because of how Walpock plays, you know, running that sets and 7, 8, 9, 15 passes before they shoot it, the Titans kind of get worn out on defense as well. So I think good job by the Titan coaching staff to keep running these guys in, to keep them fresh, to keep up that pressure and get these live ball turnovers. Nice steal by Erford there. Kicks it quickly over to White. White kicks it over to Tumas as he misses, and a nice rebound by Nate Metzger. It's a good pass. Good, just, uh, Tomas just kind of looks like he's short on that one. Like It's kind of like he's shooting with not, not confidence. He's just kind of short on that to me. So Caden Page kicks it over to Nate Metzger. Metzger's going to drive the lane. Looks like he's going to take a shot. Passes it underneath to Sadler. Sadler working hard. It looks like the ball's going to go out of bounds, and they're going to give that one to OG. Yeah, it's a heck of a battle between Sadler and Kitchen down there. They're both guys are banging on each other. Well, and you talked about the physicality in the pregame, and you know we're only in the first quarter, and immediately uh, both teams showing that they want to be physical in this yep. game. Missed three-point attempt by Walpock, nice rebound by Erford, and he's gonna kick it up quickly. This is Alex Wagner getting in the game, and he's gonna get himself to the free throw line. <laughs> good job, good pass ahead, and met as uh, Alex Wagner was uh, running the floor, and he just threw it kind of where he was going, and he finished it. Walpock fans didn't like that. You know, <laughs> as of the, the physicality in that it was kind of a, uh, a touch foul compared to what, the, what we've been seeing for the first eight minutes, but. Nonetheless, still a foul. So they're going to get that one on Ryan Sadler. They're going to give that, that foul to Ryan Sadler. And once again, Alex Wagner is going to get another Lee's Famous Recipe opportunity here. And he nails it. That pushes the score on the structure scoreboard. 12 for OG, 4 for Walpock. Titans were in a 1-2-2. Two, two. Now they kind of switch to a man-to-man. -man. You know, a lot of times they like to switch these presses up to keep the teams guessing. And they love this one right here where they come from behind and trap. Makes speeds up a team and then they throw the ball away just like that. As you can see, they quickly get the turnover by Wagner, and what a nice job! And then it's White kicking it over to Connor Kitchen. He gets his first opportunity. White with the rebound and he gets it in there in the lane. Colin White doing a little bit of everything, like you said, he's Batman. Yeah, and he's going to do a lot tonight. <laughs> right. And already with nine points, we've seen him do very much. Yeah, and a lot of it is inside the lane because he can elevate over people and they, I just don't think they have a guy to jump as high as him. I know the only time I ever made those heights was on a stepladder back in the day. <laughs> so the ball is going to go out of bounds. That's going to be another turnover for the Redskins. And so with just about 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter, the OG Titans really, really pressuring Walpock here, committing uh, and forcing a lot of turnovers so far. Yeah. and. That pressure of the Titans is causing uh, the exhaustion from the Redskins. And, you know, when you get it tired, you get tired mentally and physically. He just didn't grab the ball and went off his legs. So, OG, will they play for the final shot? It looks like they will. They're going to set up here with just 20 seconds to go. It's been a pretty clean quarter, quick quarter, that's for sure. But a 10-point lead for the Titans. They're going to get set up here. You've got Crady Tomasis running the offense. Just under 10 seconds to go. Erford's going to take a long triple. Misses the triple try. Good rebound by the Redskins. That's Sadler. Sadler's going to kick it way up the floor. He's got an open man there, and that was Cash Shadle missing. But inevitably, OG still holding on to that lead. And after one quarter here on WSN, it's the OG Titans 14 and the Walpock Redskins 4 on the structure scoreboard. We'll be back with second quarter action right here on WSN. Woody's Diner in Walpock is Walpock's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. You can call 419-738-9111 for Owls. Woody's Diner in Walpock, our premier sponsor for Walpock. We also want to thank Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. For all your commercial and residential concrete needs, you can reach Dale's Concrete in Lipsick. John Zerby and Scott Mag here. In Walpock and at a high school, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans holding a commanding lead over the Walpock Redskins 14 to 4 on the structure scoreboard. Uh, what a good start for the Titans, Scott. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're um, Coach Elkert, I think you're still happy with this. Um, they had some shots that just didn't fall. 
I, I think the pace is what they want. It's just they got to make some shots. And, you know, they limited to the live ball turnovers. My account, I think, only had two. Uh, they scored on one. They didn't score on the other. So I think they've been pretty pretty good with the basketball. They just got to make some shots to, to combat the Titans. So Walpock's going to get that, that opportunity there. And a nice looking triple try by Zach Niekamp. He hits the frost roofing three point attempt. Now that cuts that lead to seven points. Erford in the lane. Dribble, shot up and good. And boy, that quieted the crowd. That little bit of momentum that they had, Erford yep. quickly uh, settled them down. And back into their 1 2 2 half court trap. Ooh, Erford, I thought he was eyeing that one up as soon as it took off. It's a nice kick there by Colin yeah. White. And that's kind of that suffocating press that we're known to see from Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah, and I think what happens is Niekamp can't stop right at the half court because you really can't go backwards. And, and White knows they got you pinned on the sideline. He's got to get past that so he can go both ways to allow him to push the ball and a live ball turnover now. So White to Erford, and boy, he brings it down. Nice job by Caden Erford with the jam. That pushes the lead to 18 to seven on the structure scoreboard, and that's got the Ottawa Glendorf student section up and moving. Ooh, about got another one. Walpock trying to get something going here. That's Nate Metzger taking it to the hole, and he's going to get an opportunity to go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line after that foul. Yeah, that's two on Grant Schrader. I don't think, I don't think Coach uh, McLaughlin likes that call by Randy Prince uh, because he. Metzger's kind of out of control, and you know that, that's what happens. You get a dunk, and you're trying to like, okay, I want, we're down 11. Let's try to get all of them back quickly. And I think he kind of took an ill-advised shot. The first five or six minutes, he was getting to that same spot, was kind of jump stopping, throwing it back out. That time, he tried to take it in there. Lucky for him, he got the the foul call, and it probably was a foul. But Coach McLaughlin really didn't <laughs> like it that well. So Nate Metzger will get another opportunity here from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, and he'll hit, and that'll cut the lead to 18 to eight on the structure scoreboard with just under seven minutes to go here from Walpaw Canada High School. White to Erford. White's gonna drive the baseline. Jump shot, just a little short. Good rebound by the Redskins, that's Cash Shadle. Yeah, it's good hustle and uh, good defense switching off by Cash there. He might have been a double dribble. He caught it. I think he might have got away with yes, one, but Wapak is going to reset here. That's Nate Metzger. He's going to reset some things here. Wapak trying to screen, trying to get some movement here, trying to get an open look. It's going to be another triple try by Nick Campy, just a little short, and Colin White comes down with it. I'm not sure if that's the shot they want right there. Shart shots are hard to come by right now. I get it, and so they got to be patient. Uh, but it's tough when you're getting swarmed on defense. Looked inside, and Walpock's going to commit their first team foul of the quarter. Knee camp it was just a half step late. But Mag, Ross Mag, was wide open in the paint. They just missed him, seen him late, and uh, knee camp just got a half step there. He's on the, sit on the bench. I don't know if he hit knees there or something. That's the worst spot as an athlete if you hit somebody else's oh. knee. That's Oof. terrible. So OG's going to maintain possession here. They're moving the ball on the round, on the outside. It's Colin White, dribble shot, just a little short. That yeah, Ross Mag, I tell you, he doesn't give up, does he? he had two I guys love boxing the effort. Him. Oh man, that was that's the way he plays, man. You got to keep a body on him. If not, he's going to go get it. He's just like a. He was all over Ryan Sadler, oh, oh, and Sadler did everything he did. He maintained the rebound, but he boy, sure did. what a what a great effort by Mag there. And, and Sadler too to keep him off. Right, he could have like stopped, but he held his block, blocking him out and kept him off and got the rebound. That was good effort by both the young men. So Walpock now, Logan Healy will handle the ball here. Walpock gonna reset, try to slow things down just a little bit. Metzger with the basketball, getting pressure, drives baseline, he kicks it out to Sadler. Sadler back to Metzger, he's gonna take the, the triple try, misses. And boy, I think it's going to stay. No, they're going to give it to Ottawa Glendorf. It's going to be out of bounds yeah. on Logan Healy. Yep, yep, good hustle trying to go get it. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. We appreciate them for showing our instant replay tonight. The Union Bank committed to you. Under five minutes to go here on the structure scoreboard. It's the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 18, 
the Wapak Canada Redskins. Eight in second quarter action in the Western Buckeye League right here on WSN. OG looking inside. They're going to get an opportunity to Alex Wagner. Just a little long there and a nice rebound by Caden Page. Yeah, and great box out again by uh, Sadler. Just kept Aldrich away from the rim. He just kind of rode him off to the side as Wagner's going to get you know, for a hack. They're going to call that every time. Even though he may have got the ball, but you go down, you slap at it. That's an easy call for an official to make. Even though he maybe got all ball, that's just from his vantage point, it just looks like a foul for no matter where you are on the floor. You just you can't just slap down, you gotta go up. So that gives Walpaw connect, or excuse me, OG two team fouls. Sky, we, we know this rules have changed this year where each quarter it's reset with five fouls and before you go to the free throw line. What is kind of your opinion of this whole free throw rule? It's it's confusing to me, especially as someone who's constantly looking for the bonus. Well, yeah, because again, like if you're down two or three points in the fourth quarter, you almost got to start foul with three minutes to go in the game just to get close because, <laughs> you know, you, all those fouls. A whole Aldridge got the block on one end. Sadler tried the, just takes it away. Yeah, tried the dunk on the other end, and, and Ryan Sadler did a nice job defensively. And Walpock showing a little bit of life here. I, I do like their their effort tonight. You know, not backing down from OG, matching that physicality so far. Yeah. You know, Sadler's kind of be the enforcer in there. Just yeah, run a timeout. <laughs> you get about everything but run out on the floor to get his timeout. And so we will take a timeout as well. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services at the uh, 342 mark. It's 18 to 8 on the structure scoreboard OG on top of Walpaw Canetta. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio. By Alts, let Structure Ohio Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. That's Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. I just want to thank Frost Roofing for our three-point sponsor tonight. Family owned and operated for over 95 years. You can join the Frost family there. An equal opportunity employer, you can call 419-739-ROOF. That's Frost Roofing, family owned and operated. So first time out we've seen, we really haven't had much of a break here in the game, and it's been a nice little uh, back and forth matchup between both yeah. of these teams. I mean, both both teams have played even four points each in, in uh, four minutes, but that, you know, if, if you're a Redskin fan, this is how they're built. This is how they want to win the games. They want to make it ugly. They want to make it boring. They want to go back door. <laughs> they, want to, they want to rebound. They want to limit you to one and done. I mean, if, if you're a coach, Elkert, you're, this game is going exactly how you want it to be. You just got to make a few shots to close this gap a little bit. And if they've got a few, they've got a few, but they just haven't got them to fall yet. So Walpock will inbound the ball here. Caden Page is going to look for Nate Metzger. Metzger going to set things up with just under four minutes to go here in the second quarter. This is Metzger, nice behind the back. He's yep. going to spin move, takes it in the lane, and immediately he's going to get the foul called. Oh, I think it might be on Aldridge sneaking over and trying to get a buck. Yep. So Holden Aldridge, the 6'7 sophomore, getting a lot of action tonight, playing aggressively defensively. But with that foul, it's going to send Nate Metzger to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Metzger misses his first of two. He'll get another opportunity here as well. So. Adams checks out. Metzger's going to get another opportunity from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. He misses. Nice looking uh, rebound there by Caden Erford. On well, my count, that's their fifth miss from the foul line. So, you know, they're not getting it done with the open shots, and they're also not making the charity stripes. Well, and, and you know, it's, it's easy to say, but that's going to be an yeah. important point in this game. It's, points are going to be hard to come by. They've got to be able to make these, these points here. And that, what a nice looking triple there by OG for our frost ripping triple. That was Brady Fortman getting in the yeah. game. There's a live ball turnover. Ooh. Kick. Brady Fortman almost got his second opportunity. Comes in the game, hits a triple. The frost roofing three point triple. And uh, what a nice uh, jolt in the arm by Brady Fortman. Yeah, and, and the Redskins can't throw the ball backwards against the press. You, that's what the press wants you to do, throw it back. They've been throwing it back and getting themselves in trouble. They got to throw it ahead. 
to get those defenders going back. Instead, if you throw it backwards, they come forward and they step in front of a pass that usually leads to a dunk. Colin White looking around. He's headed over to Wagner. Wagner now over to Fortman. Fortman's going to take it to the top of the key. They're just moving it around, being patient on offense here. Normally see a high-flying uh, defense transitioning to offense, but I'd like the uh, discipline by the Titans Ooh. here. And uh, I don't know if I have really too many words for that frost-ripping uh, triple by Colin White. Yeah, you got to look ahead. I would, go. I would love to see the Union Bank replay on that because what a nice look at yeah. play by Colin right. White. Wow. Step back three. Pretty good defense. So that pushes this Titan lead to 24 to 8 on the structure scoreboard. And now we're with just under two minutes to go here in the second quarter. They tripled up the lead over the Wapak and the Redskins. Caden Page is going to try to drive the lane. What great defense by White. Right, and that, you know, that's what happens when they're up in you. What Your first instinct is to put the ball on the floor and try to beat them. That's exactly what the Titans do. They want you to beat you, and then they uh, attack you at the rim, get a block, and it usually leads to a three as Page is trying to put his shoe back on. <laughs> Alex Wagner with that frost-roofing three-pointer, and boy, it was close. It was 18-8 to eight just, a, I feel like, a moment ago, yeah, Scott. Yeah, it was. And but they've I taken some quick shots that led to run-out threes or layups, and it's... The Titans now are gambling like crazy because they know it's coming. They take a fall away lane, and look how fast the Titans are like flying down the court because they know if you go down there, they're unselfish and throw it ahead, you get a three-point shot. It's Holden Aldridge with a nice play on that last one here. Colin White's going to take it here, and Caden Erford's going to take the long triple. Just a little short. Uh, both Ryan Sadler and Aldridge and, hit it back up. Yeah, Aldridge going back at it. It's going to stay with Walpaw. We've got some substitutions for the Redskins now. We're going to quickly take a timeout. We'll be right back here in just a few seconds on WOSN. Back here at Walpaw Canetta High School, it is the OG Titans with a commanding lead over the Wapakoneta Redskins. A nice triple try there for the Wapakoneta Redskins. That's Cash Shadel getting on the frost-ripping three-point attempt. And, and good, here's how they did it. They got in the lane. They kicked it back out. They went inside, outside. Instead of just kind of passing it around, that was good offense by the Redskins. Good job by Adams. Got in the post. Didn't like his matchup. Squared up. Turned it back out. They hit a wide-open teammate for a three. Good offense. Something you build on before half. So OG settling for this final shot here. It's Brady Fortman th thought about it there for half a second. So Tomas is going to take it here with just 10 seconds to go. He's going to kick it over to Colin White. White's going to back it down. He's going to go one on one. He's going to drive the lane. He's going to get a foul. And boy, they're going to count that. Yeah. What a good looking play by Colin White. As Metzger was trying to give up the foul and foul him before he shot it, but White kind of felt that one through him and scored the bucket. And you know, he's got tons of basketball ability, but there's some there's some IQ there as yeah, well. I mean, right. that's that's a smart play by White to know that that foul's coming and to go ahead and get into that, that shooty motion to get himself to the least famous recipe chicken right. free throw line. At, nonetheless, you get at least a two or three point opportunity there. So White finishes his triple opportunity and pushes the lead to 30 to 11 on the structure scoreboard with two seconds to go here. And Walpock's going to heave it down the floor. Ball is loose, and it's going to be Ross Mag with the final attempt here of the quarter, just a little bit short. But that leads us to the end of the first half, where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, with a commanding lead over the Walpock and Edith Red since 30 to 11 on the structure scoreboard. We'll be back here with the halftime show. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. You can call Dale's Concrete Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial needs and residential concrete needs. That's Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick. We also want to thank Al's Woody's Diner in Walpock, Walpock's best place for pizza wings and subs and burgers. You can call Woody's Diner, Al's Woody's Diner in Walpock. 
Scott Mag and John Zerby here. Scott, we're looking at a 30-11 lead for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Let's just revisit the keys of the game and, and kind of review what you thought early on what both teams would need to, to be in this position. Yeah, we talked about, you know, the Titans need someone to go along, Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin got 20 of the 30. Yeah, they're not doing too bad, and, you know, they're getting 10 from the other guys. Not bad. I think they, I think Coach McLaughlin can live with that. Um, I think physical, I, I, I kind of think maybe the Titans were a little bit more physical than the uh, Redskins, so I think they handled the, the physicality, plus they initiated some of it, so I think they're winning that battle as well. I mean, the Titans just got to keep on keeping on, right? Uh, they made some shots that got it into their, their press. They were able to get live ball turnovers. I think everything that we said were keys, the Titans uh, put a little check mark by it, and I think they handled it uh, admirably that first half. So we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we will take the Binkley Real Estate halftime adjustments. We'll ask Coach Scott Mag, what is it going to take for both teams to come out of here with a victory? What can Ottawa do to keep continuing this lead, and what can Walpock do to maybe uh, change the score a little bit? So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back here in just a few seconds on WOSN. We want to thank Binkley Real Estate for an effective sales approach. You can reach Binkley Real Estate. They have effective, effective marketing campaigns and extensive network that will get you results that move you. That's Binkley Real Estate. They are our halftime adjustment sponsor. And as we speak about halftime adjustments, Scott, what do both teams need to do? Ottawa Glendorf to maintain this lead that they have and for Walpock to try to get back into this ball game. Well, I think we kind of touched on it with the keys from Ottawa Glendorf. I think, I think they've kind of handled those keys early. Um, I think Walpock handled it, the pressure early, but unfortunately for them, they didn't make any shots. And that, you know, the, the style that they play, if you don't make shots, it's very difficult to stay with that. So you maybe start taking shots a little bit earlier than you normally do. And then that what happens, I think, when they got down 10, they started taking some shots quicker in the offense than they normally have. Missed them. Titans came down, executed on offense, and the lead went from 10 to 19 in about a minute and a half. So I think, I mean, it sounds redundant. We've said it numerous <laughs> times. You got to make shots, kind of like yeah. this robot yep. trying to shoot these uh, <laughs> T-shirts out of the crowd. You got to be able to, you know, step back, take what the Titans are giving you, and um, and and put some balls in the basket so you can now get into your press a little bit get the game close, then you can start going back to what, yeah. what you're made. That, you know, your DNA is to set those screens, cut back door, do stuff like that. When you're down 19, the Titans know, hey, we're gonna press you. Yeah. And if you go back door, so what, right? Because right. we're gonna have somebody at the rim that's gonna beat you there and we're not really afraid. Yeah. And they kind of thought that the second half. They just yeah. said, hey, we're just gonna press you. If you go back door, so what? We'll have somebody from the backside because, again, you're, you're you're only basically guarding the half of the floor, The kind of what the Titans did. They made a great adjustment. They only guarded half the floor, so everybody on the weak side was guarding the rim. So when they did have those backdoor guys, there was an extra defender there to take that away or at least be a rim protector yep. at the rim for the Titans because they were not afraid because, one, the ball pressure, and the, the Redskins never skip the ball from one side of the floor to the other. They always go to the middle, back door, back to the side. They never swung from the right to the left. So the Titans made it a half, half court, half of the half court game. Sure. And then they controlled where they were going to go. And then that pressure increased. And, and they started then firing off, trying to get steals. And they got a few of them and let out to some layups, some quick threes, transition threes. Probably the best way to take a three is in transition because everybody's coming back. I mean, since third grade basketball, you're always <laughs> taught get back yeah. to the rim. Yep. You're not taught get back to the three-point line. That's right. So everybody runs back to the lane, and that's what a great way to get a three-pointer is to do in transition. And the Titans hit about two or three of them in transition there and uh, balloon this lead up from 10 to 19 where it is, to, where it is now. So yep. I think the Redskins maybe got to get the floor all, you know, from side to side a little bit but that's also dangerous because you have a 6'5 athletic and 6'4 athletic guys on the on the wings that are just feasting, saying, daring you to throw that oh. across. 
So, I mean, making some shots will help and just trying to get the floor from side to side to get the Titans to now have to guard the whole floor instead of just a half of it. Very well said. We want to thank our halftime adjustment sponsor, which is Binkley Real Estate. For, they have an, an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that will get you the results that move you. We want to thank you for their sponsorship and partnership with WSN. We will return here with second half action. It is the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 30 and the Wapakoneta Redskins 11 on the structure scoreboard. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight's timeouts are going to be brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your financial future. You can call Metzger Financial Services at 419-225-6067, or you can visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We also want to thank Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 95 years. Join the Frost family. They are an equal roof opportunity. 32-11 on our structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Ottawa Glendorf on top of the Wapakoneta Redskins. John Zerby here with the play-by-play. -play. Coach Scott Mag here with me, giving us color commentary. Oh, and what a take by Grant Schrader. Grant Schrader starts our OG off really quickly. Yeah, he spent a lot of time on that bench. He's probably <laughs> licking his chops to get back in and get a shot off. What a great, aggressive drive for Grant. Your coach McLaughlin, you love to see that. That's going to pay off dividends later on. Nice pass as Erford sneaks back in and blocks out one. Well, nice looking play by Walpock, but Erford comes back and makes the block. And now OG back on the move. Erford looking inside. He kicks it inside to Schrader. Schrader's going to get another shot up quickly, and the rebound's going to come down to the Redskins. Uh, Zach Niekamp bringing down that rebound. Again, like I said, he spent a lot of time on that bench. He wants to get a few <laughs> shots up while he can. The first minute he had two shots. Yeah, so he's, right. he's making his point. Right. It's like, hey, I can play too. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget about me. <laughs> Caden Page going to drive the lane here. Reverses, takes it up. Nice looking play by Page. Gets his own rebound. Kicks yeah. it back out. Well, I'm impressed as every one of these athletes, they get into the paint and they jump stop and they, you know, whirl around it. So every one of the, obviously they got to practice that. White comes down with the Logan Healy miss, and now Caden Erford's gonna get into it here with the Frost roofing three-point triple. It's kind of not your night when you miss a kind of a point-blank shot and you come down, they make two passes and knock down a three. How demoralizing is that for a, <laughs> for a team? So Cash Shadel gonna miss the shot there, and now the OG Titans on top of Wapak. The Wapak and the Redskins 35-11 on the structure scoreboard. Colin White drives the lane. He's going to be fouled here. And it looks like they're going to keep it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to yeah, let him go to the free throw line. Yeah. yeah. But what a great move by him. You know, he squared up. It looked like he was going to shoot it again. It's back from the, uh, the uh, logo out there. And they kind of have to honor him because he has made a couple of them tonight. They honored it. And he got a quick first step and got by him, got himself in the lane, got himself fouled. Now they got him isolated in the paint, which turnaround jumper just kind of a little short. Nate Metzger comes down with the rebound. Wapak's going to push it up the floor. Metzger, he's going to look for Healy. Keeps it himself. Metzger now kicks it out to Page. Nice defense by Tumasas. Grant Tumasas putting the pressure out, on, out front. That's the thing I like about OG is not only do great on their actual press, but just the pressure defense in general, it's really difficult. Only 11 points by the Redskins. These points have been really hard to come yeah, by. and they've been pretty much controlling the penetration and getting out to any shooter. So they've handled the back door pretty well tonight. Shadel, Shadel is going to kick it over to Healy. Healy, now to Metzger. Metzger is going to drive the baseline. Metzger in the lane, takes it up strong, and Nate Metzger. Nice looking points there for Nate Metzger. Yeah, he just kind of carved out some space and went through a couple guys. Heck of a drive there by Metzger. That cuts the lead to 35 to 13 on the structure yep. scoreboard. And I think they, I think that's the right call. They're gonna Titans fan ain't gonna be happy, but he did kind of extend his arm. I think that was a great call by the official down there. He kind of pushed off to get some space. 
Official seen and called it on Grady Tomasis. So it's going to be a foul on the Titans. That's their first team foul this quarter. But I think Coach McLaughlin is going to be excited about his aggressiveness and going in there. And, and don't you think that's kind of a part of, the, of an aggressive team? I mean, yep. those, those are physical mistakes, and those are okay. I mean, the mental mistakes are not, but the physical ones are okay. Right. You're just kind of separating space. Probably does it every day in practice, and you know, anyways, it, he just got caught on it. A lot of times you get away with it. Right there was one a little bit too, but he got away with it there. So White's going to drive, yeah. and he's going to get his opportunity now to get to the free throw line. That first one was on the floor, but this time it's going to be an opportunity to get to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Unfortunately for Grady, it happened to be right in front of the official, <laughs> and the guy kind of <laughs> fell a little bit, and that's why he got the foul. But. He's not, I'm not saying that he's the only one that has ever done that in, in basketball. <laughs> I'm sure every player out here has done that a time or two and got away with it. So we hear so much about this young man, Colin White. He's got 16 points tonight, the Ohio State commit. I know a lot of fans in the area are excited to watch him play in Columbus next year. A lot of people rooting for him. He's going to get a second opportunity here at the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. He misses that opportunity. But it looks like they're going to keep the ball here with OG. Yeah, two guys going up for the ball. Sadler and Adams and Connor Kitchen kind of was in the mix and it went off of, I think, Adams' leg out of bounds. You just can't give good teams extra possessions. And so White makes a nice move, flies into the lane and makes a nice looking shot there which pushes the lead on the structure scoreboard 38-13. want to thank our instant replay sponsor tonight, which is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, the Union Bank. Caden Page bringing it up the floor. And no matter the big lead, I love the aggressiveness still from OG. Page is going to kick it to the corner. Nice looking triple try by Cash Shadle. He's going to hit the frost roofing three-point attempt. And again, they got penetration, the, the drive and the dish, and got him wide open. He was, got his hand set, knocked it down. That was some good offense. Got to get more of that to get, pull themselves back into this game. So White gets it over to Tomasis. He's going to set things up here back to White. 38-16 with just under four minutes to go here in the third quarter at Wapakoneta High School. It's the OG Titans on top of the Redskins. Tomas is going to get an opportunity a little bit short. The ball's going to roll out of bounds. Hustle by Kitchen. And uh, they're going to call the change of possession. We're going to take a little time out here. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School as the OG Titans on top of the Wapakoneta Redskins, 38-16 on the structure scoreboard tonight. Caden Page for the Redskins. Nice looking sophomore, turns the ball over there. Good rebound by Brady Fortman. He's gonna kick it up to Colin White. Colin White drives the lane, misses, and we're gonna get a foul oh, underneath. Kitchen, yep. Kind of rode him at the rebound. Oh, Good job by uh, Metzger to kind of wall him off and go get that one. Page's done a good job, like you said. I, I agree with you. He's handled the ball quite well in that press, and, he, and uh, he's not really turned it over that much. He's done a good job. The only fortunate thing is he looks exhausted. Coach has to give him a break. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think if you're Walpock, if you're Coach Elkert, you know, you look at the score and you see one thing, but, I, I you know, besides putting the ball in the bucket, they've done a lot of good things tonight. Yeah, there's some things you can build on. Like we said, this season's a grind. They're going to beat some teams that they probably shouldn't. They're probably going to lose some teams they shouldn't do. But it's just because uh, just how they play, the style, and, you know, if you make, you know, boils down to putting the ball in the basket. Like right there, Sadler didn't know if he wanted to shoot or not. <laughs> Ryan Sadler's going to get on the bench, and we're going to get a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We're going to take a timeout, too. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 
Com. We also want to thank Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus tonight. Also in St. Mary's, you can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 2.26 to go here in the third quarter. The Ottawa Glendorf Titans with a commanding lead over the Walpock and Redskins, 38 to 18 on the structure scoreboard. Now, I believe the score was a lot, you know, wider just a few moments yeah. ago, but Walpock's done a nice job of not necessarily getting back in the game, but but cutting the lead just a little bit. Right, they keep playing hard. Good things happen when you play hard, and, you know, they, they're just, I think they're kind of just learning how to play together. Good looking rebound there on the miss by Logan Healy. He's gonna kick the ball over to Zach Niekamp. Niekamp, a 6'2 senior. Gonna handle the ball this possession. Nice, nice looking pass. back door, yeah. To Healy, Healy over to Metzger. Metzger back to Niekamp, Niekamp. Un now under two minutes to go. Ooh, good hustle by Healy. Man. Full extension to go get that one. <laughs> well, he showed his athletic ability there with yes, the hustle. He, did. he about lost it there, but was able to maintain possession. Even though it's going to be a jump ball, he's going to maintain possession. And you like to see that. This late in the game, even though they're down, they're still playing hard, Absolutely. especially against a good team like OG. Yeah, and he could have just gave up, like, oh, man, I dropped it. But he just. So Nate Metzger. Metzger going to try to do something here with the basketball. Kicks it over to Sadler. Sadler, Ryan Sadler going to take it up. He's going to get a foul, and he's going to get himself to the least famous recipe free throw line. <laughs> I'm just kind of just looking at Erford's reaction there. He's like, what, me? I don't know if I touched him. Well, that's going to give Ryan Sadler an opportunity. We talked about free throws early. Walpock has struggled from the free throw line. Points have been hard to come by, but these are the opportunities they need to uh, commit so that they can possibly get themselves, yeah. not necessarily back in the game, but these are the things that they can work on free throws, uh, putting the ball in the bucket, and, and, and pressure, you know, the, the pressure that they felt throughout this entire game. Right, and, and you know, like you said, that this, this making these foul shots is some extra bonus points that they could put on the score that they've worked so hard like Sadler did. He did a great job of getting himself to the to the blow block, squared up. And now he's got to reward himself by making some of these foul shots. So Sadler's going to get a second opportunity at the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He does not commit, so that stays with this uh, OG commanding 20-point lead on the structure scoreboard. Greedy Tumasis, six-foot junior, getting the opportunity to play here, and we're going to have another call underneath. Tate Merriweather is going to call uh, a floor foul on the Redskins. Yeah, it's going to be on Metzger. It'll be on his third. Him and White were kind of a battle royal down there. And uh, <laughs> finally, uh, Tate Mary, Mayberry said, I had enough of that. I'm going to call foul. Yeah. This, this is not going anywhere. This is done. Well, in a tight game, you may not get that. But in a game where this kind of gap, I mean, I, I like the effort by both teams as Colin White makes it look so easy, yeah. so pretty. Going right, come back to your left, one dribble, elevate, jump over somebody, shoot it. Scott, that's very tough to guard. Talk, talk to our fans about what kind of time you have to put into the gym to do something oh, like that. that. That's hours of shots. That's doing that, repeating that. You know, that, that's what happens. A lot of these young kids watch these NBA guys do these crazy shots, but it's not the first time they've done that. You know, I mean, yep. they, 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 Sadler on the floor gets timeout. Get to take a break, come back and talk about that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and take a Metzger Financial Services timeout with under a minute to go here in the third quarter. It's the OG Titans 40 and the Walpock and Ed Redskins 18 on the structure scoreboard. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. I want to thank Owl's Woody's Diner in Walpock. It is Walpock's best place for pizza wings, subs, and burgers. You can call 419-738-9111. That is Owl's Woody's Diner in Walpock. We also want to thank Dale's Concrete. You can call Dale's Concrete and Decorator Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential needs. It's Dale's Concrete and Decorator Stamping in Lipstick. As we return to third quarter action, just under a minute to go, 
Zach Niekamp's going to inbound the ball for the Redskins. Grady Tomas is playing great defense for the Titans. Even an inbounds play is hard to get the ball in for the Redskins. <clears throat> Niekamp, uh, top of the key, yeah. hits a turnover. Thought Sadler was going to go back door, but just overshot him a bit. Yeah, and, and that's just, you know, Niekamp thinking, that, if somebody goes back door, he's got to continue to go. And I think that's the right call. Got a couple different substitutions coming in here. Grant Schrader is going to return for the Titans. Looks like Caleb Adams is going to come in. Nice looking six foot four inch freshman for the Redskins. And I think Paige came in a little bit too there. So under 20 seconds to go here. OG is going to hold on to this basketball. Holding on to the final shot as they're holding a commanding 22-point lead on the Structure scoreboard, the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Colin White going to drive. He's going to kick it into the corner. And boy, Grant Schrader getting his opportunity for the yeah. frost-ripping three-point attempt. So that pushes the lead for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans to 43-18 to over the Wapakana Redskins. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for all your catering needs. Home style happens here. We also want to thank Frost Roofing tonight, family owned and operated for over 95 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer. You can call 419-739-ROOF. 43-28 on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt scoreboard as the Ottawa Glendorf Titans with a commanding lead over the Wapakoneta Redskins. Grant Schrader getting his opportunity for the triple try. Misses. Caden Erford tries to keep it alive and a nice rebound by Caden Page. Yeah, good job to box him out. And Erford, good job just slapping it up and just see if one of his teammates can get it as the Titans converge on that uh, triple handoff. Uh oh. Ooh. Boy. Yeah. Colin, Colin White thought about it. He yeah, has a little well, bit of a smile there. I think Sadler and a couple other guys are running down there to not let that happen. So good <laughs> job by White to probably not do that in case of the undercut. <laughs> Colin White, 22 points tonight as he leads all scorers. And as the OG Titans with a commanding lead over the Wapakoneta Redskins, 45 to 18 on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts scoreboard. Now, Scott, you're in this situation. You're a coach. You're down. You're Coach Elkert. What are, what are some things that you're thinking at this point? Well, I think you're working on your offense. Defensively, you just want to see, you know, how hard they're going to play and if they don't give up and maybe try to put in some stuff that maybe even working on in practice, some new things, some things that you uh, haven't really shown yet. You might as well see if you can work it and use it kind of as uh, seven minutes of practice against guys that you don't practice against and, and obviously from the score, a little bit better competition and see what you can do. Colin White adds to his point total, 24 points tonight. And then we put guys maybe on defensive things. Maybe you find out if who can be our number two or number three defensive stopper, who can be our backup point guard, who can be maybe a new shooter, things like that you kind of work on as well. I, I like what you said there. I mean, you know, you look at the score and you think, well, this is a wasted night, but it's not. You, they're looking for answers. And this early in the season, there's still lots of question marks, you know, going, going ahead. I think, like you said, it's a great opportunity to see what you have and maybe what you don't have. Yep. Right, and I, me personally, I, I would wish Sadler just won up with it. He's like, he's. I think he's kind of timid to see if he, you know, he's afraid to miss. But you can't be afraid to miss and 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 get the ball down in there. You got to put it up and then go get it because guess what? You know where it's going. Probably most chances are shooting with a guy guarding you. Grady Tumasis with that miss there. Nice rebound by Zach Nekant. Excuse me. That's uh, Caleb Adams, freshman, yeah. getting in the game. Getting an opportunity to play here, showing uh, Coach uh, Elker what he's got. Logan uh -oh. Haley's going to get it stolen. And Live ball turnover. I think uh, he had <laughs> planned that one there. Yeah. Wow. I hope we got that on the uh, <laughs> replay. That is going to be nice. That, what a sweet looking play on the Union Bank instant replay. Yeah. And boy, that lit up the OG student <laughs> yeah. section. And 
And it also lit up two guys off the bench because <laughs> I'm sure that means, Mr. White, your night is now done. <laughs> we can go out on that one. What a play by yes. Colin White. 26 points on the scoreboard with that exclamation. I didn't even know what to say. I knew it was coming. I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, I, I was just sitting back and watching. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Sometimes you just have to sit back and enjoy it uh, and right. watch it over and over and again. I, and I think and I think even the, uh-oh, uh here comes another one. Here we go. Wow. Colin White making a statement. Man, We're going to get a timeout. Yeah. That's enough. A Metzger Financial <laughs> Services timeout, and it's enough for not only Ottawa Glendorf, it's enough for us right now. So we're going to take a timeout. It's 51 18 watching high school basketball on WSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. That is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. I want to thank them for our sponsor. We also want to thank our replay sponsor tonight, the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. Tonight's replay sponsor is the Union Bank. 51 to 18, Ottawa Glendorf all over the Wapak and Redskins. We've watched Colin White dunk twice, Scott. Boy, it's been fun. Yeah, it sure has. Now you got some guys that coming in and make, get some, make sure, hey, I want to get my minutes and see what I can do. Good job by Sadler to go and, and he looked, that one he was aggressive. He scored and the last one he was kind of timid. I like to see that move. I, I can live with that one. It was a nice left hand. Didn't yeah. get it to fall, but had a nice opportunity there. And boy, look at Alex Wagner coming off the bench to hit the frost roofing triple. And that pushes the lead to 54-18. Yeah. Good uh, penetration and dish. So Caden Page doing a nice job of handling the basketball tonight. He's going to get the opportunity. Yep. He's going to get the free throw line, the league's famous recipe free throw line, off of that uh, shot opportunity. Tomasis, I think, got him a little bit on the hand. As uh, Fortman and uh, Adam Mag set check in for the Titans. So we talked about if you're Walpock in this situation, you're down, what do you do? Now you're OG and you're Coach Tyson McLaughlin. You've been in this situation a lot. What are some things that you're thinking in this moment of this game as you have a, whole, a big lead? You don't want to let up, but what are, your, what are your thought processes at this point? Well, you're just trying to, trying to make sure your kids still play hard and, you know, it's still the game. You've got to respect the game, play hard, and it's not about you now. Like a lot of times some of these kids come in and think, hey, the game's a blowout, now I can get my shots up. No. You still got to pass the ball and, you know, be a good teammate and run the stuff. If not, if you don't want to do that, then probably take you out and come back, <laughs> set next to me. So we got some new numbers out yep. there. It looks like, is this Braden Zimmerly taking no, a shot there? No, that's, uh, that's Adam Mag off the okay. JV team. I th this is his first, uh, first night dressed in varsity, freshman. Awesome opportunity for yep. Adam Mag to get in the game and get that shot. Nice looking opportunity for Caden Page too. Looks like he's gonna get himself back to the free throw line. And this is where the early preseason rosters don't always match up with uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, it's, when coaches uh, try to dress guys that maybe have been injured or get an opportunity off the JV team to get some minutes on the varsity yeah, game. Yeah, he's been playing pretty well for the JV team, so he's earned himself some varsity minutes, as well as um, uh, Ben Westrick, not Ben Westrick, that's his, that's his brother, Dave Westrick, is injured coming off that knee injury he suffered this summer. And uh, he's get, working his way back. I've been seeing him run in the gym. And so he's, he's probably a few weeks away of putting his uniform on for the first time this year. That'll also take some minutes. Fortman misses. Yeah, nice looking triple try by Brady Fortman. But now Walpock's gonna go ahead and set up here. With just under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Page is gonna get another opportunity here and misses. And Mac comes down with the rebound. Yep. Alex Wagner back to Mag. Mac's gonna set something up. Coach McLaughlin calls the play. Wants to get the movement here. Wagner gonna take the deep triple, and boy, Alex Wagner hit a few of those uh, frost roofing uh, triples tonight. Yes, he has. He's two points above his average. Three points, actually. So Walpock's going to walk the ball up. Caden Page with the OG Titans 
holding this big lead, 57-21 on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Nice move by the freshman, Adams. It's gonna be a foul the other way. Sadler. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick timeout. 136 to go here in the fourth quarter. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back with a minute 20 to go. John Zerby and Coach Scott Mag here. And Coach, we've, we've gotten to the running clock in high school basketball. What, yes. what are your thoughts on that? We see it in football a lot. Yeah. Don't, I, don't see it in basketball a ton. Uh, just because, again, some of these guys that are playing now practice every day just like the guys that play the majority of the game. Yep. And, you know, with the running clock, they don't play as much. But I think they deserve the time, too, because they put in the time at, and, and they deserve some of this minutes. And, and again, why not allow some of these kids that maybe played a little bit of JV come in here and show what they can on the varsity and, and get rewarded for the effort they put in in practice as well as maybe the chance to move up the ladder. That's right. I agree. But I get it. I understand yeah, it. Yeah. If it wouldn't be for coaches that understand and just, you know, like run up the score, right. we wouldn't have to worry about this. Right. But if you do it right, like the Titans are going to do, is probably going to not going to shoot the ball here where some coaches or some teams yeah. would have went through and shot quick or did whatever, but they're going to get this game over with. Well, Connor Kitchen got in the game and got himself a steal there at the end, and that's going to just now give the opportunity to the OG Titans to run out this score. And what a good first uh, opening league win for the Titans as they're going to have a commanding win over the Wapaw Canada Redskins. 57 to 21, OG on top of Wapaw Canada tonight on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. In just a few moments, we are going to have the Binkley Real Estate post game show. So stay with us as we are here at Wapakoneta High School. Once again, the final 57-21, Ottawa Glendorf over Wapakoneta. We'll be back here in just a few minutes on WOSN. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that will get you results that move you. That is Binkley Real Estate. We want to thank them for our post-game sponsorship tonight. Scott Mag, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans with a big, big, big league win over the Walpaw Canada Redskins tonight, 57 to 21. Why don't you give us a quick recap of what we've seen tonight? Well, I you know, Batman might have played like Superman tonight with a couple of them dunks. <laughs> yeah. And he was very, uh, very impressive. And, and nothing against Walpock, but they don't have a player as skilled or as athletic as Mr. Colin White. And there's a reason he's going to Ohio State, right? I mean, don't, yep. I'm not taking this to insult anybody from Walpock, but he is one of the best players in Northwest Ohio, if not the state of Ohio right, for a reason, and he pretty much put on a show tonight, and the Redskins did not have anyone that they could combat that with, but they tried, and they did some good things that, you know, they, their offense was working, but unfortunately, when you play that slow down, kind of back screen, uh, up screen, and hold the ball, and hold the ball, and wait for the shot, when you get down 10, 15, it's very, very difficult to get back, and what happens, that 15-point lead ends up exploding to 36 because you can't make some shots you throw some balls away and the Titans you know they were on fire I should yeah. shoot threes that second half I don't know many that they missed and it was dunks and and made three pointers in transition and that uh, doomed the Redskins but again there's some stuff there to build on it's a long season the Redskins aren't as bad as this score uh, states yep. they did some nice things and just the Titans were just that much better tonight. Very well said. I want to thank Binkley Real Estate. They have an extensive, <coughs> excuse me, an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and an extensive network that will get you the results that move you. That is Binkley Real Estate, our post-game sponsor tonight. We want to thank our production crew tonight. Jacob O'Neill and Seth Hegemeyer doing a great job on our cameras, and Zach Keith putting this all together for us. The final score for tonight from Wapakoneta High School. It was the Wapaw Canada Redskins 57, the Wapaw Canada, or excuse me, the Ottawa Glenda Titans 57, the Wapaw Canada Redskins 21. For Scott Mag, this is John Zerby saying so long, everyone.